Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. It's such a wonderful privilege to be here in Calgary Metro SDA Church. And it's been a while since I've been here. I believe the last time I was here, you, were, you guys were still in the older church that you used to rent. But praise God for this new place that is provided for you all. And today I will be delivering a sermon, which I actually prepared originally for our spiritual winter retreat. So it was part of a talk about stress management and burnout. And I've shortened it and hopefully it will be helpful for a lot of us here today who might be encountering some stress in their life and if you've managed to drive through the snow to get to church today I believe that in itself is stressful enough for the day and hopefully through this talk I'll be able to incorporate some of the things that I've learned while during my walk with God as well as things that I've learned while studying psychology and before I proceed I would like to give another word of prayer. Let's bow our heads for, for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again, Lord, for allowing all of us here to be in your presence and to enjoy the Sabbath with you. And as I impart the message that you have given me, Lord, I pray that you speak through me and may this word or these lessons reach someone here today who is in deep need to you handle the stresses in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness and your mercy and your grace. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Can I get to the next slide, please? Thank you. So to start, I want you to recall the most stressful event that you've encountered in your life. So think about it. What led to the stress? Was it getting out of a job? That was that had a really toxic environment for you. Yes. Did it involve losses? Did you feel alone? And then how about how did you react to this stressful situation? Did you end up complaining about it? Did you withdraw from everyone else? Or perhaps you turned to things of the world to find escape or comfort. Or maybe you turned to God and you wondered, well, is God listening to me? Why am I experiencing this type of stress if he is? No wonder, no matter how big or small, each of us has encountered a stressful event in their life. And you are not alone in this. When we actually look at the Bible, there are numerous examples of stressful situations that the people of God have faced. And today, I would like for us to draw our attention to the wilderness. Next slide, please. Thank you. So from the Bible, I've listed three accounts of God's appointed people in the wilderness. There might be more, but I haven't gotten to that yet. I haven't read the whole Bible in its entirety yet. But I've listed here first the Israelites. If you remember, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years due to their unbelief instead of reaching the promised land in 11 days. Imagine the delay that they had to go through just because of their unbelief. The Lord had to transform the Israelite nation to people who believed in him. And during this time when they were, before they entered the promised land, they had, if you remember, they sent spies to check out the place and they felt stressed, like eight of them felt stressed after seeing the foes that they would have to defeat in order to claim the promised land. The Lord had to allow generations of people who didn't believe in God to eventually die as a way of refining the nation for his purpose. Because entering the promised land required great faith and obedience. 
So two of the 10 spies, Joshua and Caleb, were able to enter the promised land and Joshua even led the people to following God's command to take over it. The second one that I noted here is prophet Elijah, who journeyed into the wilderness after running away for his life from Queen Jezebel's curse. And this was after the victory in Mount Carmel when he was able to prove that his God, our God, is the all-powerful God and essentially the prophets of Baal do not worship the true God. And while he was in the wilderness, the Lord listened to his cries and guided him to anoint kings who were faithful to the Lord and to anoint Elisha as prophet in his place. And the third person that I wrote here is Jesus, whom after he was baptized by John the Baptist, was led by the spirit into the wilderness to prepare him for his ministry. And there when he fasted, for 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted by Satan. And with every temptation, the father provided a way of escape through his word. And with every temptation, Jesus overcame. So in all of these three accounts, there were periods of stress. And in all accounts, God's presence and provisions were there working things out for his will to unfold. And in all of these situations, stress led to transformation. What was once a seed of stress that started to, um, started to grow and transform into fruits of faith that benefited not only individuals involved in these wilderness situations, but also benefited future generations to come. For example, the Israelites, the preservation of their people eventually gave way for Christ to be born. Elijah hearing the Lord in the wilderness led him to anoint Elisha, who actually performed twice as much miracles that he did. And eventually the fortification of Jesus' character and his faith in the wilderness gave way for salvation for the entire human race, for us to be saved. And as we walk with the Lord, we will also encounter stress. But when we're in the Lord, stress becomes a gateway to transformation. Next slide, please. So when we think about stress, we can also think about it as an imbalance of resources. So this is more of the introduction on what stress is in essence. So whenever we encounter an event, we, there's always two things that we assess. We assess the demands of the stressful event that uh, has on us, and we also assess the resources that we have to meeting that demand. For example, this morning, if since we had Sabbath school lesson, for example, someone tells you to lead the lesson, but you're not really prepared for it. So that would lead to a stressful, that you would perceive that as a stressful situation because you think, well, I'm not really prepared to lead Sabbath school. However, if you've continuously kept up with your reading, then leading the Sabbath school lesson wouldn't be a problem or wouldn't be stressful for you because this is something you've prepared for. You have the resources to meet that demand. So it's balanced, the scale is balanced, but when it is not, the scale is off. And when it comes to stress, in the short term, stress can be beneficial for us and can motivate us to change in a positive way However, when stress becomes a long-term experience and our body does not have a chance to recover, then it becomes harmful for us. Next slide, please. So as I said, stress is a gateway to transformation and really, how we conceptualize stress can also determine 
um, whether it becomes a barrier for our spiritual growth or not. And actually one of the effects or symptoms of long-term stress when it becomes harmful is burnout and is a problem in today's society. And here I've written the definition of burnout and it's emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion that is related to but distinct from anxiety and depression. So stress can lead to a multitude of different symptoms, but burnout is uh, one of the things that we have been seeing that is prevalent in our society, as I've mentioned. And to avoid symptoms of stress, such as burnout, we have to look into our limitations as God's created beings. So this next portion is not my own thoughts, but um, I would like to highlight from a talk by Orlando Perez, who is the Vice President Mission and Ministry for Advent Health in the US. Next slide, please. And this is basically the key points of his talk. He mentioned that the root of burnout comes from the inability to accept our limitations. So if you recall from the creation story in the Garden of Eden, when God created man and woman, he set limitations for them. And that's not to say that they didn't have freedom. They were given responsibilities in the garden to take care of all the animals and all the plants. And they were told that they could eat from any tree from the garden except from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Paris points out that burnout is the result of being tempted to denounce our humanity. Because in that situation, God created a limitation to distinguish himself from his created beings. And to point out that not that those limitations don't really necessarily are there to cage you in, but they exist to have boundaries for you to be protected and to ensure that you're not pushing yourself to the limit where you should be. And when we denounce our humanity, we try to assume the characteristics of God. So we initially remove that distinguishing factor that he's trying to put in there. We try to assume that, you know, like God, who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present, that we know everything there is to know about the world and everything around us, that uh, in our bodies we can do everything that we want to, even though there's limitations that are present and that we also have the fallacy that we're going to live forever and we live according to that assumption, which in essence, if we assume that for ourselves, we fall into the same temptation that plagued Lucifer in heaven. Because essentially Lucifer wanted to be like God. So in this sense, it takes humility to accept who we are, for who God has made us, humans with limitations. <laughs> Next slide, please. This, okay, thank you. And this brings us to the idea of self-control. When we assume that we are like God, we falsely assume that we have more control over the things that are not really within our control. And that shifts our focus away from things that are actually in our control. So we create unnecessary stress that in the end, we could instead bring to God. For stress management to be effective, we have to accept our humanity. And this requires us to put our pride aside and to humble ourselves before God, to acknowledge his sovereignty and his power over all beings, including us, and to trust that he will provide for our needs that are not within our control. Philippians 4 verse 19 says, 
And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So when we surrender under his will and provisions, we can have a better idea of what we actually have control over and we can leave the rest to God. And these steps require obedience. Oh, can you please go back? Thank you. So these steps require obedience that when he tells us not to worry about things that is in his control, that we have to give those things to him in prayer and in faith, knowing that he will take care of us. In essence, it's knowing God's character and knowing what he is capable of so we can leave it to him and we can trust him and we can eliminate ourselves of these anxieties. That also means that when he instructs us to take care of things that are within our control, and this can include things like our job, our family members that are under our care, or the situation that he has placed us in, we have to act in obedience to shift our focus to where we can work on these things and we can steward the things that he has given us. And what when we know what we need to focus our energy on and to focus our efforts on as well, then we can move into managing our stress. And next slide, please. So when we look at managing our stress levels, I've highlighted here two levels that we can tackle it. And first we will be looking at the individual level. Um, thank you. So stress management in the individual level starts at starts with how we look and think about stress, or as health psychology calls it, stress appraisal. The degree of stress that we feel about a situation is comprised of two key components I've put here. The first is our interpretation of the situation. As I mentioned earlier, is the situation harmful to me? Am I going to get in trouble because of this event? And the second part is our perception, uh, not only of the situation, uh, more so of our skills. And this would coincide with the resources that I would talking to you about earlier. Do I have the right coping skills to cope with this stress? And depending on the levels of each will determine the degree of stress that we have. And because um, knowing this about the equation, if we can manipulate both of those factors, then we can change the degree that we feel stressful about the situation. So for example, uh, changing the interpretation of the event that could be or could not be stressful can mean something like adding humor to the situation, or if you perceive the situation as something that you can learn or grow from, then it helps us manage the stress better. And as Christians, this can also look like fixing our eyes on Jesus. And when we fix our thoughts and our efforts on the Lord, we greatly increase our confidence in the situation, knowing that God is in control and that our perception that we can overcome this stressful event, knowing that he fights the battle for us. Mm -hmm. And here I've extracted from second chronicles 12 verse 15 the lord said do not be afraid or discouraged for the battle is not yours but god's when we leave the things that we cannot control or our stresses to the hands of the lord then he fights our battles next slide please and since, yes, here, 
And since I've been listening to Pastor Pavel Goya's sermon lately as well, I also wanted to highlight one of the key points that I took from his sermon last week from Lacombe, where he really highlighted the importance of Psalms 100 verse 4, where it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So when we uplift God and recognize his sovereignty and power over our problems, our problems become so small and insignificant, can't even see it in the presentation. That's how big our God is, and that's how small our, God, our problems are. And we can have a better perspective of our problems in that aspect. Next slide, please. So this picture did not translate as well as I hoped, but this is what I wanted to talk about as part of the other um, part of the equation, which is the perception of our coping skills for the stress. And managing our own perceptions and our ability to cope is another aspect of, another aspect of that is determining the negative patterns or the negative thinking that might be unhelpful to us in the situation. So sometimes the source of the stress can be external, it could be events that we have no control over. But sometimes it could be internal, it could be our own personality, or in this case, our negative thinking patterns. And these are some of the examples of the negative thinking patterns that I wanted to highlight, and I'll read each one of them. And I want you to think about the ones that you might be more prone to thinking or using when you think about situations that are stressful for you. So the first one that I've written here is all or nothing thinking, which makes us falsely think about things in in a perfectionist way, which is basically we just look at things black and white and we're not able to see the gray in things, the gray area. The next one is overgeneralization, which can cause us to assume patterns from one event, no matter how unrelated or illogical it is, and apply it to another. The third one is mental filters, which can cause us to be blind to our blessings or God's provisions or his hand over things by focusing on certain types of evidence that supports our negative thoughts. The third one is disqualifying the positives that exist in a situation. And this also kind of goes in hand in hand with mental filters because we're just looking at the negatives and we're stuck to looking at the negatives, which causes us to feel more stressed. And the next one, fourth, is jumping into negative conclusions about what people think, even without checking with them, which what they call here is mind reading. And, or you end up jumping to conclusions based on things that you predict about the future before it even happens. And sometimes this can be a positive if we predict positive outcomes, especially when we think about God's blessings and how God is gonna work in our life. But if we think about the negatives and we're stuck with that, that's when it becomes stressful for us. Next one is we can either catastrophize over a negative event. So it starts with a small detail, like I forgot my pencil and it can magnify into something like I'll never pass my test because I forgot my pencil and it just escalated into a level that becomes overwhelming for you to handle. Or you can end up minimizing something that can help you get through a stressful situation until it doesn't become obvious to you anymore. 
Next, you can also be susceptible to using your emotions for reasoning with ourselves in an unhelpful way. We know that our emotions are unpredictable and that the heart is deceitful, but if we're so carried away by how we feel without really thinking about the situation in an objective light, then that's when we fall into stress. Next, we can also end up being too critical of ourselves, getting stuck in the shoulds and the musts of life, that when we make a mistake or perhaps um, we act in a way that is not in line with how we expect ourselves to act, then we think of things in a lot more stressful manner. Or we can even be critical of others as well and cause stress either both to the other person or to ourselves as well. We can also be prone to labeling the either the situation or ourselves. And this can look like, for example, if you've committed a sin or you're stuck in a habitual sin and you just label yourself as a sinner, forgetting that Christ has redeemed you. Yes, we are all um, sinners and the only thing that makes us good is God and the blood of Christ that covers us. But if we get stuck in thinking that we're still supposed to act as sinners, then we're not able to move forward and actually step into the life that uh, God has intended for us and be delivered from our old life. And lastly, instead of minimizing the stress that we feel, we can possibly take more responsibility for something that wasn't completely our fault, and that's called personalization at the end. And you know, as we've gone through this, um, think about the ones that you've been more prone to acting on, as in the patterns of your thinking, and think about the Bible verses that you have found or you've encountered in your Bible study or in spending time with the Lord that can combat this. And this is definitely a great way for us to be more grounded in the Word instead of being stuck in the way that we perceive our stresses. And I proceed to the next one. Next. Thank you. So in the event that we do perceive the stress, the event as stressful, or where we've decided to take action in to deal with this stressful situation, there's two ways that, that have been categorized here based on health psychology that we usually deal with our stressors. The first one is you can respond to the stress either in an emotion focused response, and this is something that you usually go for if an event or a stressful event is not within your control, and it's more of managing how we respond to that stress. And the second one is problem focused response which is what we opt for if we've thought, okay, there's something that I can change or control within the situation, and therefore I can get to the bottom of that stressful situation. Next slide, please. Here I've outlined not everything, but just some of the things that we could possibly use as we try to tackle the stressful situation with an emotion-focused coping. And this can look like talking to God in prayer. You know, as our Sabbath school lessons have been for this quarter, we're looking at Psalms, and Psalms as a book is a perfect example of pouring out your troubles to the Lord. And if you can feel an emotion, there's probably a psalms for it. 
and it's always good to be honest with the Lord because he knows you inside and out he knows um, no. you even no. before you were born and being honest to God about how you feel or about the stresses that you've been carrying is a great way to have that relationship with God that will help sustain you in times of stress. And he's always eager to hear from his children. First Peter 3 verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. Second one is seeking social support. So seek trusted individuals that you have, whether it's your godly counsel in church, people whom you know can hold a space for you to just let your feelings out and support you in times of stress and despair. You can also journal your thoughts and your feelings, and this is a great way to pair with your daily devotionals as well. You can use it as a way to write down what your reflections about the devotional are and how it relates to your life, what you think God is telling you in that moment. And it also provides an outlet for your stress as well. And you can look back at it, either knowing more about yourself and who God has created you to be, or you can look back and see how God has delivered you from that place. So there's a lot of positives for that. And the next one is doing things that bring you joy, whether it's spending time with God, spending time in nature, or being with people who uplift you. And being self-aware of the things that bring you joy will definitely help in this regard. And so that you would know which activities to engage in. And if all else fails, if after doing all of these, you still feel that stress, you still feel down, have compassion for yourself and have the patience when you're not in a place where you would hope you'd be and reach out to the Lord and accept his compassion for you. Sometimes the Lord freely gives this compassion, but we don't really reach out and accept it. And accepting it is an important way of how we can deal with the stressors in our lives. The next one is, apart from accepting God's compassion and his guidance and his love, we should also have space for accepting the things that we can't change. And it may be difficult to deal with it in the meantime, but you're not alone. And in this world, there will be stresses, knowing that sin is around us, but that pain won't last forever. And emotions will come and go. Next slide, please. And the next part, or the other part of that um, folk, uh, behavioral methods that I was talking to you guys about is the problem solving focused method. And this is just an outline of how you can possibly tackle it. It's just a framework, but it basically is set up this way so you can tackle and um, solve the stressful event from its root. Um, so for this one, I, re I also would recommend you praying over it before, but um, in general, the guidelines are defining your problem specifically, so what it is, um, where it happened, what happened and how, and being as specific as possible will help clarify all of the other details that we don't really need to take care of. The second step is developing multiple solutions. So um, you can create at least three and then you can assess the solutions for um, 
their pros and cons, their strengths and weaknesses for what it is, and then you can choose one out of the three. And part of this assessing can also involve, you know, what are the, whether it's a long-term or a short-term solution, because some, for some solutions, you can enact it and then it ri gets rid of the stressful event for a short period of time, but then it co comes back again. So those are the things that we can think about and ponder whether this solution would be the best suitable for you, as well as your likelihood of actually implementing the solution. Um, because that is the next step of this, is implementing the solution in itself and um, determining whether you plan to do this as, at a specific time or whether it's something that you would spontaneously do if ever X, Y, and Z happens. And finally, to review the results of implementing your solution and just refining it and determining what it, for yourself whether this it, was this the right solution to do, did I make the right judgment, should I make adjustments next time in case something like this happens again. And this will definitely help you when managing similar situations in the future as well. And these are just uh, more uh, behavioral suggestions. The first one is basically just getting used to the stressor in essence. And it's perfect for situations where there's no real threat. You just perceive that there might be. Um, of course, if you're getting chased by a bear, don't do this. But it's perfect for things like, for example, public speaking as I'm doing right now and dealing with the stress of giving out a sermon or something like that. And it's just a way of you getting used to how to get through the stressful event while still reaping the benefits of it, whether it's personal growth or just doing things for the Lord. And the next one is actually born out of our health message, which is New Start. And I won't be going into too much detail into it, but it's basically just implementing lifestyle changes that help you manage stress better. And if you have these building blocks, so to speak, then you're able to tackle stress in with a better mindset. So taking care of your nutrition, more whole foods and more balanced diet, having exercise as we were talking uh, about earlier, the benefits of running. And you don't even have to run. It's It could be 20 to 30 minutes of any physical activity of your choice. It could be brisk walking, sports, and so forth. Drinking enough water is important. And actually, like, for example, if you're hydrated, dehydrated, then you're more prone to you know, experiencing headaches, which can contribute to your stress, for example. Having ample amounts of sunlight. I know it's not always possible for us here who live in Calgary, but just getting enough sunlight when there is, taking vitamin D supplements if you can. And um, some people have had those sad lamps, which basically emulate the effects of sunlight. So you can take advantage of that as well. Temperance, which is just self-control in all things, taking things into moderation. And air, getting fresh air, and this is done best in nature. So as summer rolls around, you can plan your things according to that. And finally, trust in God. And this goes back to what I was talking about earlier, leaving things in God's hand. And the next one that I put here is mindfulness or presence of mind. I put presence of mind because I think that it's more fitting for what it is. Because essentially, sometimes when we think about stress, we can just get stuck in thinking about it and ruminating about it. For example, you could be here in church, but you're thinking about 
stress at work or stress at school. And the point of having presence of mind is just being here mm -hmm. and especially today for Sabbath, being in the presence of the Lord and dwelling in his presence and receiving that rest in him that he freely gives to us. And it can be a way to separate or have a boundary between your work or all of the things that are keeping you stressed and just being here in God's presence. I've included here um, a grounding technique, which you can use if ever you do feel that you get stuck in ruminating about your stresses. So just using your five senses, five things you see, four things you can touch or feel, three things you hear and two things you smell and one thing you taste. And this could be really helpful if you're someone who's prone to having panic attacks or just getting stuck in that negative thought process that you have. And finally for that one is um, secondary skills. So these are things that not necessarily has a direct correlation to what you're feeling stressed about, but something that can help, such as building your time management skills, learning how to use planners or calendars and scheduling your day if you have a lot on your plate. And next one could be social skills because there's a lot of research that says that social support really does help buffer against the negative effects of stress. So having more people that you can spend quality time with is definitely something that can help you manage your stress. And this slide is just to give a summary of the things that I've been talking about today and definitely important as um, Adventists and Christians is reading the Bible and studying the word and and this goes hand in hand with prayer and meditation as well in God's word because when we and this is what something that Pastor Sam has actually talked about last week and Gladys is that when we pray to the Lord, we talk to him, we are in, in communication with him. And then when we read the word, he is able to talk to us and doing those things um, hand in hand will help us have that constant communication with the Lord. And so we can know um, the things that he is trying to tell us. And Next one is praise and worship, which we have been talking about earlier. It could be, you know, um, singing for the Lord, or it could also be just applying the gifts that he has given you in service for him or in service for others. And those are only some of the things that you can do for praise and worship, but it's a big scope, as we all know. And then if you're stuck in a stressful situation, don't hesitate to reach out to your pastor or your elders because they're able to hopefully give you a, some advice or some direction. Sometimes when we think of a stressful situation ourselves or we deal with it on our own, it's hard to really see it from an objective perspective, but if we can get someone else to help us in thinking about it or dealing with it, then we can tackle it better. And as I've mentioned, practicing Sabbath, and I noted it here because there's actually experts who say that anticipation of rest and actually having rest is a great way to prevent burnout. And we're so blessed that the Lord has reminded us and given us this seventh day to really dwell in his presence. So we can have a opportunity to not be burned out. And for the second level of stress management, I just want to briefly talk about how as a congregation we can impact others' levels of stress. Next slide, dude. Thank you. And going back to that social support aspect that I was talking about, it 
is one of the greatest buffers against stress. And that is something that we know as a church as well. And even in the garden, one of the only times that God has said that it is not good was when he created man alone and he said it's not good for man to be alone. Everything else that he created before then, after um, he separated night and day, he said it was good and then every single day he kept saying it was good it, until he got to the part where it was only Adam. And this is when we know that we, that God has created us for a communion. And because we are created for communion, and it is basically the second half of the Ten Commandments that we love the neighbors, our neighbors as ourselves, then we can help create an environment where people can get that social support that they need so they can, that all of us can help alleviate each other's stresses. So in the context of the church, that can look like setting up activities that we can be in fellowship with one another. For example, I know we don't have potluck or AY today, but for other days, you guys have potluck and AY and all of the other activities that you have so that you can be in fellowship with one another and have that opportunity to connect. And from a personal level, we can also think about being that trustworthy, safe person for other people to rely on when they are in need. Because as we spend one, out of, one day out of uh, seven days of the week here, we spend a significant amount of time here and just being there for each other as God calls us to be is a great way to support each other in times of stress. And as leaders, we can do that by creating more of those opportunities for the people in the congregation and really creating an environment that doesn't promote burnout or stress and really ensuring that we're taking care and looking out for the people in church. And all in all, this helps widen our sons, our sense of control because now we're not only managing stress in the individual level and what we can control, but we're looking out for each other and learning how to lend that helping hand that um, in a way that God intended for us to be. So in everything, modeling Christ and reflecting God's word. And for the next slide, as part of that social support aspect or increasing activities that will help um, each other to be in fellowship with one another, I actually wanted to invite our youth to a to our book club slash bible study of the patriarchs and prophets and this is composed of our youth or slash young adults who are within the age range of 14 to 30 which is a big range <laughs> but it's just a way for us to not only get into the word but also grow in our faith and be in fellowship with other people who also want to grow in our faith and it just creates an environment for support um, for each other so if you would like to take a picture there's a qr code that you can scan we meet on wednesdays at 8 p.m through discord and we also sometimes meet on friday evenings to read the actual books because we do the discussions on wednesdays but we read read it on um, Friday evenings, um, but feel free to join us if you would like, and um, so we can continue fostering that love um, and that spiritual growth that we need. And uh, last but not least, as I close my message, I know this has been long, <laughs> I want to really reiterate that repetition is key. And 
All of these things that I've discussed very briefly with you all. There could be some that you've already been implementing and there could also be some things that are new to you and you would like to try out and to really know how to manage your stress. And sometimes implementing new things can be really difficult and you find that you do it once and it's not effective and it's easy to give up, but by continuously relying on God for strength and knowing that the process is a process, it's a transition, it takes a while, will help you know how to navigate through your stresses and find new ways to cope with them. And I just wanted to make this analogy just to drive in that point. When you're driving in the snow, you know how everyone just drives where there's tracks present because it's the safest and it is because it's easier and it's just it's just more predictable and we know that if we go through this way others have gone through it and you don't need to really think about it that much but it's way harder to drive in that path where there really isn't any traction and it's just snow and you don't know are you going to skid or, or are you, it requires a lot more faith to drive through that but over time the more drivers drive through that snow it creates a new path and you can think of you know acquiring new skills acquiring new ways to manage your stress in a similar way and I chose this verse to close, and if there's anything that you can gather from this talk, it's really summarized in this verse. And something near and dear to my heart is that my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. That even if you have tried new things or there are times when stresses can be so overwhelming for you. Know that you have a great God that is looking out for you, that is listening to all of the things that you utter and listening to your cries and hearing you out. And you're not alone in this and you can always gather your strength from him each and every day. And may God bless you all with this prayer. Amen. Amen.